What if I could restart my cloud journey? I'm a senior solutions architect working at AWS. Yes, I work for the biggest cloud provider in the world, but that does not mean I have not made mistakes along my way. Today, I'm going to share about some of the mistakes I made that you should avoid. And I will also share some of the things that work for me that you should follow to help your cloud journey. Let's get started. The first mistake I did was analysis paralysis. Uh, when I was thinking about learning cloud, confused about whether to learn AWS or GCP, I started to ask a lot of people and I wanted to know their opinion. And they all gave me different opinion. So I got totally confused and uh, that kind of slowed my learning progress. So I'm a kind of a guy who is like, tries to think everything, analyze before taking a decision. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. So for those of you who are in the same shoes, who are thinking whether to learn AWS or GCP or Azure, and you are just thinking, thinking, thinking and not learning, get started. That's my biggest advice. I lost few months just doing analysis paralysis, trying this, trying that. So I thought maybe I should not learn cloud. Maybe I should learn big data. Maybe I should stay in my current project, which was a legacy mainframe project and try to get promoted. So uh, for those of you who are confused, follow this rule. If you need to look for cloud jobs outside your current company, learn AWS. It is the biggest cloud. There are a lot of jobs on AWS. Secondly, if your current company is adopting cloud and you want to switch to those projects, then learn that cloud. But if your current company is adopting AWS GCP or AWS Azure, so there are multiple clouds, learn AWS. Something that worked for me is getting a certification. So my resume was real plain. At that point, I have only worked in two companies and that two for like one company for seven years, another company for eight years. And only thing I worked on was like legacy technologies. So my resume was nothing fancy. So I got the solutions architect associate certification and solutions architect professional certification after a little bit. Those really helped me because I was one of the first few to get these certifications in my previous company before Amazon. And uh, when I put them on the resume for applying to internal position, that kind of sets me apart, right? Because then it shows that uh, I have bias for action to go learn something new. And it kind of is kind of like the, on the top of the resume, I would put solutions architect, professional certified. Uh, so it kind of sets me apart. And I feel like uh, when I was applying to AWS, that certification really helped me both for getting selected by the recruiter as well as in the interview. So get some relevant certifications. For example, if you are learning Kubernetes, get the CKA or CKAD certification. Those are very valuable and then put them on top of the resume. If you want to go to DevOps, get the DevOps certification from AWS. Those, those will be really helpful. Next thing uh, that did not help me was the expectation of learning every service. Uh, so I am a kind of a person who is like, okay, this is the subject, uh, where is the book? And then I'll just try to go through all the chapters, all the sections, like study thoroughly. I did not know that in the interviews, they are not going to ask all these different services. So I should have stopped wasting time on learning everything. So you need to be comfortable knowing that there is no way you can master even 50% of AWS services. So you should only focus on three main areas, compute, storage, and networking. And within these three areas, you can only run learn few services. So for compute, learn EC2, Lambda, and stretch goal, Kubernetes. Uh, under storage, learn S3, EBS, one SQL database such as RDS, MySQL, and one NoSQL database, DynamoDB. Under networking, learn a load balancer and the VPC concepts like subnet, security groups, network access control lists, etc. And that is more than enough to get you started. But instead, I tried uh, learning a bunch of different services that I could not uh, remember and that kind of wasted a lot of time. Next thing that worked was uh, doing small, small hands-on. So when I run into a difficult service like VPC, I would always try it out. I'll create a VPC, I'll create subnet, I'll create a network access control list, I'll provision an EC2 in the private subnet, create a load balancer in the public subnet. Those really helped me to clear the concept and I highly recommend you do the same. Now, one thing I could have improved is create projects 
to showcase my skills. So I did this small, small hands-on, but I did not create like a, a project combining multiple services. Some of the projects I recommend is doing WordPress or doing a serverless web page, serverless microservices, even like the fun projects like Alexa or like doing a video on demand solution on AWS would be really helpful. So in your resume, you could say, I am professional certified or I have this DevOps certification, Kubernetes certification. Also, I ran my own WordPress web server. So one cool idea is you can create your resume and host it on a static website or in a WordPress website. So I should have done that. I thought like that could have helped me a little bit more. One thing that really helped me and I felt like this one is one of the biggest things that helped me. I created personal blogs and I started a GitHub repo to showcase uh, my small projects and I also created a YouTube channel. So I started with those personal blogs. Uh, so in LinkedIn, I created an article. So I was learning GCP and AWS, like told you analysis paralysis. And I just posted an article, how to use both AWS and GCP. Uh, and then uh, I was learning uh, DevOps and I learned how to deploy Lambda function using AWS's code pipeline and code build. So I just released an article on that. You don't need to get approval from anyone because LinkedIn article, anyone can go create. You can create in LinkedIn, you can create in Medium, wherever you want. Those really helped me in two ways. Number one, when you are writing a blog, you need to understand what you are doing. It's easy to just learn, do it yourself, but then it's hard when you are trying to explain some concept to other people, you really need to understand it and you need to know how to simplify it. So those blogs really got a lot of attention and I got a lot of connection requests, including from recruiters. Uh, so I highly recommend that you folks do that. Also the second thing that all these things uh, do is it kind of shows to the recruiter, uh, your hiring manager, that you can explain these concepts to other people. So if you are working with customers, you are working with a big team, and uh, since you are creating this blog and GitHub, you know how to work with GitHub. Secondly, you, you know how to explain uh, these concepts to other folks. And I would also say, if you can, go ahead and create a YouTube channel. So after I did this uh, personal blogs and GitHub repository, I also started my YouTube channel and that really helped me. So for next year, take up a goal of creating your own YouTube channel. And let me know of any questions or any help, I'll help as much as I can. And the last mistake I did was not making enough connections from the events. So I went to serverless conference in 2017, 2018. I went to reInvent in 2018. And all I did was, I was just going from session to session. I'm like, all these cool people that I really respect are giving the session. So I packed my day with just attending talks, but all those talks gets released in YouTube. So all the reInvent talks get published in YouTube, all the other conference talks like KubeCon, they all get published in the YouTube. So I would recommend two things. One is go to the sessions that are not published like Chalk Talk in reInvent or a hands-on session, but more importantly, make connections. I was like a little shy. I was not confident about my spoken English. Uh, so I would just stay away from other people. Force yourself to sit in a lunch or dinner where you don't know anyone and make a goal of saying hi to at least two people that you don't know. Just say, hey, uh, my name is Raj. I am a, a solutions architect in this company. What's your name? What do you do? How did you move to cloud? What is one of the cool session did you attend today? Uh, any, any tips, tricks? Soon you'll be chatting, you'll make a connection and that helps a long way. I feel like if I did that sooner, I will make more connections and then they will introduce me to their recruiters or if they were hiring, they will reach out. Also, this cross-pollination is good. Uh, when you are in, in a team, in your company, you just sometimes talk about the same thing, right? Like maybe you complain about your manager, maybe you complain about one difficult projects you guys have to deal with. Maybe you complain about some other team not helping you. When you talk to other people from other companies and you ask them, hey, uh, so how did you guys migrate to cloud? What service was most useful? Did you guys adopt Kubernetes or serverless? Like how did you choose between these two? What are some of the learnings? 
So, you know, like it's, it, it opens up new door in your mind as well. So, all right. So those are some of the things that work for me and some of the things that I wish I could go back and change. But hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment, ask me any questions in the comments, all that good stuff. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.